Paul is saying, whoa, what wisdom is this? Where did this son, and they use, this, they use this word, where did the son, this son of the carpenter, that means that in their sight, what they knew him to be was just a low life, a low level person. So when they began to see, okay, the manifestation of Jesus, they were stunned. And I want to say to you, from that moment, they knew it wasn't kidding. The world in which you're living need to understand you are not just the son of the carpenter. It really wouldn't matter what your background was. Whether your bar, your dad never made money, your mom never made money, whether was, you came from a lineage of poor people, it really doesn't matter when you step into this level of wisdom because it's already here. Anybody here, listen to me. And I want you to take this with you everywhere you go in whatever it is you do. There are many ways in which wisdom is manifested. That because of time, I won't be able to go there. I'll just say one of them. One of the ways in which you, your wisdom is manifested is how you build a great kingdom business empire. What did I say? Hallelujah. I'll tell you one thing. I lead this church. I pastor. I pray. I fast. I speak in tongues. I try to as much as I can, okay, because that is necessary for me to oil my relationship with the Lord. And to continue. But also, I'm involved in business. Hallelujah. Very important. And I'll talk to you a little bit about how you get your first capital and what you do with it after that. And everything is in the book. Everything. How to make money, first time, how to grow your wealth. Until it becomes a, an empire. It's all in the book. You only are not looking in enough. Number one. Number two, you're not seeing it because you think Jesus is not enough for you. You come to church. You pay tithe. You give offering. You spend two hours in church. But you do not believe that Jesus is enough for you. Do not believe, and I'm saying this to the shame of all believers all across the world, you don't believe that God's word is powerful enough to give you wisdom. We lay claim to it. We talk about it. We sing wisdom songs. But you see, there's a difference between having a mental assent to something and being totally convinced about something. It's not everything you read that you believe. Is that correct? You read that and say, well, it mm, looks not like a good idea. And then you never... That is exactly the attitude you have towards the scriptures. And if you're going to change your life, you have to know that this is the wisdom of God in written form. So, this, so was, this, was it? This should be your reference material. I want to say clearly, boldly, confidently, and I want to say, it. if this is all you read every day, it is enough. I will say it again because many of you say, well, if I pastor can, it's pastor saying that um, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't read MBA books. I, shouldn't, <laughs> I did a master's program. By the time I finished the master's program, I asked myself, where did I go and do there? Because none of the things I could use, well, most of the things I couldn't use. I realized that it's not everything that you read that works for you. But can I tell you something? Everything that is in this value statement will work for you. Marriage will work. Finance, it will work. Relationship, it will work. Health, it will work. Politics, it will work. Leadership, it will work. Government, it will work. Setting up a structure for your business, it will work. This, this, is, this is life. Someone say, this is life. So Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But many of you claim the part where it says they are spirit. So you say, the word of God is spirit, but it's not life. I don't need it. I want to show you 10 principles of how to make money and how to grow wealth in the book. Are you ready? 1 Kings chapter 10, from verse 10 to 29. And I think that's enough interruption for me. The book of 1 Kings chapter 10. And I want you to listen. I might repeat myself. I may not repeat myself. That many people, okay, will get something out of this place and take it and run with it in the name of Jesus. All right, 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 20, 29 to 29. It really talks about Solomon's prosperity. Now, we've been talking about Solomon's wisdom, about Solomon, people visiting Solomon. I wanted to show you Solomon's net worth. In naira and cobble or in dollars. Okay. So that, because that, because that, so, so we need to relate with figures. I want us to relate with the figures in the life of Solomon. Solomon's prosperity. 
All right, the book of 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 29, 20, verse, verse 10. Look at what it says. It says, and I'm reading here, after the queen of Sheba had come and there had been that transaction, you know the story, and uh, she had given him stuff, the Bible says in verse 10, and then she said, man, I see the wisdom in you. And I was speaking, I've been speaking all this whole weekend to the leadership team about your wisdom must be publicly quoted. You have to go visible with your wisdom. Until the world sees your wisdom, and Jesus said that, they're not going to come. And if they don't come, they don't bring resources. And if they don't bring resources, you're going to be broke and poor. So the, your wisdom must be visible. Now, the difference is you're not the one selling the wisdom. You are exhibiting the wisdom. People are consuming the wisdom and telling their friends and bringing their friends into your grace. Hello, people. That's how this works. So it's not, it's not show forth by marketing. I'm not talking about marketing because that's what they tell you. Market yourself. Promote yourself. No, 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 no. That's not the way it works. Okay. The wisdom of God is powerful enough to advertise you. What God says is you just walk in that wisdom. People will see it. Tell their friends. Their friends will tell their friends. Their friends will tell their friends in the neighboring countries. And all over the world, they will hear about you. And they will beat their path to come check you out. That's the principle in the Queen of Sheba. And when she came, she brought money. Someone say money. All right. So you can attract money to yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what God's trying to teach us. All right, so in verse, in verse 10, I hope I'm not too fast for you. I have the penchant to be very fast because I'm, a, I'm an excited guy. Hello, people. Amen. All right, verse 10 says, And this woman gave the king 120 talents of gold. Now, when you read gold, what do you mean? What does that mean? Dollars. Naira, is that correct? Money. Hello, is that what is that? Is that how their, their, their monies are denominated in those days? Gold. So this woman came, all right, and brought money to Solomon. So there is a way you can attract your first million. Manifest wisdom. And your first million will come. Anybody here with me? Oh, pastor, I'm broke. How do I make money? I can't pay my bills. My, I'm behind in my bills. I'm struggling with my finances. God says to say to you, it's in the book. You put the wisdom I put inside you on exhibition and leave the rest. The world will pay your bills. You're not supposed to pay your bills. You're not designed to pay your bills. You are designed by God with the gifting of God. The world is supposed to pay your bill. Hello, anybody get that? Anybody get that? How many people got that? If you got that, wave to me. I said this, I want to get, I'm, I really want to talk. And I don't want you to go spiritual on me, Okay. I want to teach you about the money and talk, talk about money. Let's talk money this morning. So, the woman gave, her, gave him gold, large quantities of spices, precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in as those the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. That was money she gave him. Tremendous money. Next verse. Iram's ship. Now, king of Sheba was a monarch, a woman. There's another king called the king of Tyre. His name was Iram. It was David's very good friend. David was, was Solomon's father. You know the story. Don't let me, don't let me, don't let me insult your intelligence, okay? So Iram was David's very good friend. They, they, they knew. I mean, he, that, that, those were the guys that, that held sway. You know, in the, com, in, the, in the committee of kings. Kings roll with kings. Hello, people. All right, so when I thought, and I said this yesterday, when, Iram, when Solomon became king, Iram didn't think much of this spoiled boy. Spoiled boy. So he didn't reckon with him. But when the wisdom of Solomon kicked in and Solomon's wisdom began to manifest and he began to hear news all around the place about that supposed spoiled sport that was his son's friend, he sent word to Solomon. He said, I want to be your friend like I was your father's friend. And this is it. I want to make an alliance with you. Hey, that was what Solomon needed. Solomon needed skill sets to build ship and marine because he was going to go into marine business in a moment. He needed a skill set. That skill set doesn't exist in land in Judah. But that skill set was brought by Iram. Why? Why did Iram bring the skill set? Why did Iram sign an alliance with Solomon? Why did, why did he go into strategic partnership with this boy who just got into wisdom? It was because when wisdom lands upon your life, the world will pay your bill. Hmm? Anybody home with me? Anybody home with me? That's why the scripture says the, most, the principal thing is wisdom. Once you get wisdom, your life is made. Once you lack it, you will struggle. 
You will hustle. <laughs> Hello, people. All right, I think I'm spending too much time on this, but it's good. Is, that, is it good? It says, and then from there, I'm in verse 11, Aram's ships brought gold. For those of you who are just joining us online, this is our Sunday meeting, and I'm speaking on 10 biblical ways to make money and to grow wealth. All right, just in case you just join us. The Bible says here, and, and from there, they brought great cargoes of almond wood and precious stones. Verse 12, the king used the almond wood to make supports for the temple of the Lord and for the royal palace and to make harps and lyres for the musicians. Why didn't he do that? He needed to do that because he must, he must, he must make his worship more quality. I'm going to come to that. I'm going to come to that. He was already a worshiper, but he understood that even now that money is coming and resources is coming in, I must put priority on what brought me here the first time, first instance. Many times people forget their source. They forget what brought them into reckon. They abandon it. Wisdom says don't abandon what brought you into fame and fortune. I'll come to that. So when this resource came into, him, into his hand, that's what he did. And the scripture says, so much almond wood has never been imported or seen since that day. Bible and not talk about importation. Amen. How many of my people here are importers? Put your hands up. Any importer here? Very, you are very few. Any importer? Very few. Okay. Now the scripture says, hear this. Kings verse 13. I want to read all the way to verse, um, what verse does I say I'm going to read to you? What, what verse 29? Thank you very much. Verse 29. So we are in verse 13. I want you to please listen to this. I'll read the scriptures and I'll give you these 10 things. And then I'll trust the Holy Ghost to take us from there. So the king Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all she desired and she asked for. Besides what he had given out of his royal bounty. Then she left and returned with her retinue to her. So that was exchange. She gave Solomon. Solomon gave. She gave Solomon. Someone said she gave. And she received. Someone said he received and he gave. So he received and then he gave. Hey, he received and then he gave. Very, very, very strong principle. You never receive only. You have to learn to give. Very important. But we're going somewhere. And so scripture says in verse... Uh, Help me here, please. Help me. We're doing this together, Abby. We are on verse 14 now. Now, the weight of gold. Every time you see gold, read money. Every time you read gold in the scripture, what does it mean? Money. Dollars, yen, euro, whatever you're transacting, whatever is the best currency in the world. Because you need to read the scriptures in the context of your day. All right, so listen to this. So scripture says, so the weight of gold that Solomon received yearly, every year, was 666 talents. And uh, that's very powerful because when you convert that to a tonnage of gold and you know what you can sell, do with that, that's amazing. He says, not including revenues. If, you, your, if your Bible is yours, underline revenue. What does revenue mean? Money. What does gold mean? Sorry, what does gold mean? What does revenue mean? <laughs> so the Bible is talking about how money came into Solomon's life. So, and I'm talking to you about Solomon's net worth, Solomon's prosperity, the scope of it. Scriptures, which can be your, spokes, your scope. God sent me to say to someone here today, that you can also walk in the prosperity that Solomon walked in, if you get the principles right. All right, so let's, let's check them out. And scripture says, not including the revenues from the merchants and traders. Businessmen gave revenue, they brought revenue to him. Merchants, who is a merchant, please? Who is a merchant? Somebody who engages in commerce. A person who is a businessman, that's a merchant. Who is a trader? You all know it. Somebody who sells something, okay, and people pay him. Out of what they sold and people paid them, they bought them, they came and brought to Solomon. Out of the business they did, they came and gave Solomon part of it. I don't know what percentage, 
But the Bible says consistent revenue. Solomon was having consistent inflow of money on his, on his life while he sat on the throne. What was he selling? Solomon was selling only one, only one product. What was his product? One product. I'm going to come to that because I need to give you these things and then we'll come to the principle of laying a line out for those of you who are writing. Are you here with me? So the traders and the merchants and from all Arabian kings, that means that all the Arab, Arab nations, do you know Amer, people you call the UAE today, the Jordan, the Lebanon, those are the people that surrounded Israel at that time, all of them. So when the favor of God is on a man's life, he will make even his enemies be at peace with him. The reason Israel is having, and I don't want to talk about Israel in the Middle East crisis. The reason Israel is having problems today is because Israel, Israel is now a politics. It's not a, it's not a democracy. It is not a, it's not a theocracy. Because in the days of Solomon, those guys came to, me, to him. They didn't want, they couldn't afford, you couldn't afford to shoot an arrow against Israel. Unlike today, where they are bombing Israel. Israel is under threat 24 hours a day. They are always born. Eddie, every Israeli person carries an AK-49. Because they are under threat. In the days when wisdom rules, all these enemies, and how many more, they are all, they are all children of Ishmael. They all hated Israel with passion. They all hated Isaac with passion. But when the wisdom of God kicked into the life of this one Isaac child, all the Ishmaelites said, excuse me, sir. When wisdom finds your life, you have no problem with enemies. Anybody here with me? Anybody following me? What was Solomon selling? What was Solomon selling? <laughs> Solomon was selling wisdom. All right, listen to this. So all the kings and all the governors of the land. Okay, and uh, verse 16. King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammered gold. 600 beakers of gold went into each shield. Gold, gold, gold. The talk was gold, 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 gold. Prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. Money, 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 money. Can I hear money? Somebody say money. Somebody say money. Somebody say money. Somebody say money. Money is not a bad thing. In fact, absence of money is what is the problem for you. Siblings fight because they are from a broke family. The reason your siblings fight you and they don't like you and you don't like them too is because there is no money between the two of you. And the little both of you, all of you are sharing, you are keeping it. If there is money and everybody is rich and all of you bring your Rolls Royces to daddy at 80th birthday, who has time to fight anybody? Africa's problem is lack of money. You can solve it in your family. Do you hear what I'm talking about? What I say is the problem is I <laughs> need Now God is saying you can change all that. And that's why I'm sharing this. Okay, let's, let's dig deeper into Solomon. Because that's where we're going. Verse 17. Are you here with me today? All right. He also made 300 small shields of armor gold with three miners of gold in each shield. Again, the Bible says the king put them in the palace of the forest of Lebanon. I want you to underline that. In the palace of of the forest of Lebanon. There's something very specific I want to say about that. When I get there, in the verse 18, we're going to verse 29. Then the king made a, a great throne inlaid with ivory and overlaid with fine gold. So this guy hired ivory. What's ivory? What's ivory? Where do you get ivory from? Where is ivory from? Huh? How many elephants must have been killed for Solomon to have so many Ivories. Think about it. Because when you're looking at it, you need to understand the, the level and the volume of the wealth of this man. Okay. So Bible says he had ivory and he overlaid it with fine gold. Gold, 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 gold. Someone say gold, gold, gold. Church people say gold, gold, gold. Don't say Jesus, Jesus. Say gold, gold, gold. Say gold, 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 gold. Come on, open it. Try and get used to it. Gold, gold, gold. Say gold. Try, try now. Try. try. Make effort. Say gold, 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 gold. All right, say Jesus. Say, say Jesus. Say, no, stop Jesus. Say gold, 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 gold. You talk Jesus too much. 
Gives us the wisdom of God. What did he show you? He never lacked for anything. He exhibited wisdom that people paid for his bills. He had a treasury. Jesus had a treasurer. You can't have treasurer if you don't have a treasury. Abeko. Hello, people. I mean, use your church. Let's talk church talk, Abi. Eh? <laughs> How much was Jesus' ministry making? <laughs> that would be able to say, let's have a treasury. I don't think it was a broke Jesus. What we teach and what we manifest is a broke Jesus. If you read the scripture, you see it. Jesus had people who are paying consistently for his wisdom. Some certain women, influential women. They were consistently funding. Luke chapter 4 verse 8. They were consistently pushing money for him. When Jesus died, people fought over his clothes. I don't think that was a rag. Hello, people. Because, you see, because we must be careful, okay, not to reduce the kingdom of God, okay, to our mentality of poverty, African poverty, and mindset. So prayer has impact. Scripture must have impact. Bible study must manifest in your life. Your giving must have presence. You're coming to church every Sunday must show in the marketplace tomorrow. If not, what you are doing is religious service. And I want to say to you, God is not happy with it. So, so what does it mean? When we say Jesus walked in wisdom, when we say G Solomon walked in wisdom, when we say people paid their bills, they were never broke. They were not poor. They had resource. Back in their enterprise. How did they do it? They sold only one product. Wisdom. Go on. Next verse. If you are doing, if you are, if you are doing this with me. Next verse. What verse, please? Number 19. Number 18. 18. Then the king made a great ivory. Yes. And then 19 says, The throne had six steps and his back had a rounded top. On both sides of the east of the seat were hammers, with a lion standing between each of them. Twelve lions stood on the six steps, one at either, each, either end of each step. Nothing like it had ever been made for any other kingdom. If I was speaking to ministry leaders, I'll be dealing with this. There's some apostolic principles here that I'd love to share. But this is a business talk. Listen to this. Next verse. I will say here. 21. All King Solomon's drinking things were gold. All his cups were gold. And all the household articles in the palace of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. This, par this, 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 this palace of the forest of Lebanon. There is something about it. We are coming. We are going to get there in a bit. Nothing was made of silver. <clears throat> Because silver was considered of little value in Solomon's days. What are you wearing, man? In the days of Solomon, if you showed up like you showed up in church today and all the time, with your silver, whatever it is, we won't allow you into Israel. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, let's, 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 let's this. So, the Bible says in verse 22, the king had a fleet of trading ships. Did you see trading ships? In the version, the Bible says ships of Tashish. And that is the, and David, I want you to take note of this because we're going we're to go back to what the, the call that God gave us. Okay? We are, we are, we are, we are rolling with the ships of Tashish. Hello, people. And I'm going to explain to you what that means when I read that. I'm reading the scriptures, explain to you, and then I'll just read out the ten things so that you want to write. So that's what I'm going to be doing. All right, the Bible says, so the king had a fleet of trading ships at sea along with the ships of, of, with the ships of Iram. Once every three years, these ships return, carrying gold, silver, ivory, hips, and baboons. Question I want to I want, I'm going to answer when I get to that point is, where do you think 
these businesses came from? What was the scope of Solomon's business empire? Read with me. Verse 23. King Solomon was greater, I'll say, in what? In what? Stop there. I don't want your church mind to read King Solomon was, 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 was what? King Solomon was, um, was, was greater in wisdom because that's what you want to go away with this weekend. That's what you want to go away with this weekend. But that's not what the Bible says. King Solomon was greater in riches. And I think we all, we all have made our mind to lie to ourselves. That our money is not important. That we don't need to be wealthy. That we don't need to be rich. But when we leave church, you are cornering people by the, by the door and saying that my house rent is due and troubling their life. And because of your troubling them, because they know you are going to trouble them, they, won't, they stop coming to church. Because they know you are troubling them too much. So stop it. Make your own wealth. Grow your own riches. You are what it takes. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? What did I say? What did I say? You have what it takes to grow your own wealth. Okay, so scripture says Solomon was greater than everybody. Every king was greater than them. And these are super kings. The whole world, the whole world, the whole world, the whole world sought audience with Solomon. <clears> oh, <throat> world, global. To hear what? Solomon was a warm, warm product man. What did Solomon sell? Wisdom. How did he package the wisdom? That's what we want to see. All right, next verse. All right. The, so the whole world came to hear him. The wisdom, who put it in his heart? Who? Who is the source of the wisdom? Hey, somebody give me, give me some feedback. Who is, who is the source? You must understand that. And give him the glory. But you have the stuff. Hey, listen to this. What did I say? There are two people here involved. There is a God who is the source of all wisdom. There is a man who is the custodian of the wisdom. That custodian is you. The source is your God. You do your job. He already gave you and invested that resource into your life. You do your job. You ask God for many things too much. A lot of wrong prayers. A lot of unneeded prayers. When you're supposed to be busy. Your prayer is supposed to be more worship. More worship. More worship. Now, what's your mind? Now, what do you want? How can I serve you more? How can I please you more? You're not supposed to be asking God for money. It's an insult. Then what did he, why did he give you all he gave you? Why did he fill you with all those things? I want to say to your shame, you are too lazy to think. And you will never get more than God has given you. Now, this is a very hard thing, people. I know it's very hard. Pastor, you're supposed to be pastoral. You're supposed to say, it's okay. It's not okay. Because if we don't deal with this issue, you'll still be in this church 10 years not capitalizing the resource God has put in your life. And you will say, it's pastor's fault. It's my wife's fault. It's my husband's fault. Do you know? And I think I want to quote what um, uh, as it. John Wesley, the founder of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the Methodist Church, said, he said, you should strive to burn so far that people will come and watch you. When you're on fire with your, with your, with your product that God has put inside you, first, you have to find it. I pray that somebody finds it today. There is a hidden treasure inside you, may you find it. I said, there's a hidden treasure inside me, may you find it. I said there's a hidden treasure. May you find it. I said there's a treasure that God fixed inside your life. May you find it. In the name of Jesus. We're almost there. Bible says in verse 25, year after year, everyone came 
everyone who came brought a gift. Year after year. What the Bible say? Speak to me now. Speak to me now. Solomon went to look for gifts. Where did his gifts come from? People came to look for him. Because Solomon got what people need. And every year, revenue, gold, flowed into his life from several sectors and from several areas. Yet, he was a one-man product. Man. Articles of silver and gold, robes, weapons, spices, horses, meals, these were the ways in which you knew was a rich man and wealthy man back in those days. Number of horses, number of mules. Okay, number 26. Solomon accumulated. Someone say accumulate. Someone say accumulate. Kini is some accumulation, Ejo. Eh? Opombe, Abibani. Solomon had stuff. So Solomon accumulated chariots, horses. He had 400 chariots. 12,000 horses. Nyema koke. Eh? Sorry? Is it 1,400? 1,400, not 400. 1,400 chariots. 12,000 horses. Which he kept in the chariot cities. He had a place where he kept them. You will see what he does with them in a moment when I read out these things. Where are we, please? And also with him in Jerusalem, 27. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones. Why are you dealing with, dealing with women like this now? What does Solomon have with women wearing silver and doing younger for us in church, please? Praise the Lord. Solomon's horses, listen to this. <clears throat> he makes silver as common in Jerusalem stone. See that as plentiful as sycamore fig trees in photos. <clears throat> you need to give me how many minutes I have so that I have specific times, minutes I have. Because I want to respect the people's time. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Q. The royal merchants purchased them from Q. Underline royal merchants. Solomon had expert advice. Listen to this. They imported. Who are they? These royal merchants. Who are his consultants? Who are his experts, advisors? Never do a business that you don't know anything about. That you don't have expert inside info about. One of the principles. I'll read it out later. They imported a child from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150 they also exported them to all the kings of the Etites and the Arameans. Come on, come on. Same principles. Number one. As I, as, I, as I run. Number one, become a product by boxing your gifting or your wisdom or your brilliance. There's a brilliance inside you. Find it. It's there. There's a brilliance inside you. What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? My wife was talking to me yesterday about a lady. She said, there's a lady that makes cakes. She said she makes the best of cakes that she's ever tasted. That lady has a brilliance. That lady has a wisdom. If she walks that wisdom and she packages well, if she boxes that brilliance well, if she boxes that wisdom well, if she packages that wisdom well, people call it she's just a baker. You have no idea. She will rule the world. Number one. Is that right? Okay. That's how to make money. The first rule to make money is what? Become a product and box your brilliance. You can call it packaging it or whatever it is. People call it package, brand it, whatever it is. That's how you make your first money. And everybody needs to make their first money first before they can start building wealth. <laughs> okay, hello, hello, people. That's the basic thing. The most basic thing is you have to. Build your product first. Make your first money. And then everything else builds on that. Number two, always reinvest. Always reinvest the first proceeds from your wisdom harvest. 
to further support your niche business. What was Solomon's niche business? Selling, he was selling wisdom. Where did he get the wisdom from? The wisdom came from his relationship with God. What did Solomon do the moment first money came to him? First Kings 10, 12. The scripture says he fortified his core. The first Almog wood, set of Almog woods that was brought to him, he used them to support his core. He reinvested the Almog woods into the temple of the Lord because that's where his juice flowed from. Anybody listen to what I'm saying? Did you hear what I'm talking about? Okay, you lose money, you lose your investment when you make the first money and you go buy a Sokubo car. Hello, people. All right, let me, I need to run. So Solomon's core was the temple. Don't forget that that's where he got the thing from. He got the wisdom from. He was a worshiper and he got the wisdom from the temple. And he went back there, plowed the first money into supporting that, strengthen that. Because that's the first place. Of his, of, that he understood. You have to know that. Number three, always have something to give back to your strategic partners. First Kings 10, 13. Queen of Sheba came and gave him. Solomon came and gave her back. That's where it is. That's how you hoil partnerships. Real wealth growers don't take the gift too. You have to oil that relationship. Anybody saying that? So you don't say, I have taken from him, I have chanced him, I have taken what I need. Next. You never say next. Because these are the people that will recommend you to their friends. Okay. You say, that guy is a giver. That guy has got stuff. And it's not because they need from you. It's because you are hoiling the relationship. Never forget it. Number four. Always know your numbers. Always know your numbers. Always know your numbers. Why did I say that? 1 Kings 10, 14. You must always know the state of your flock. The Bible says uh, in verse 14 of that scripture, 1 Kings 10. Where am I? Why is my verse 14? Anybody help me? Anybody help me here? What does it say in verse 14? The weight of, of the gold. The Bible mentioned the weight of the gold. That means that they weighted it. <clears throat> that means they measured it. <clears throat> that means they knew what Solomon was worth. They knew what was coming from where. How much money was coming from Egypt. How much gold was coming from Arabia? How much does it weigh? There was somebody in charge of the records. You have to have a basic record and wood keeping. Know your numbers. Anybody here with me? Number five. Have a war chest. Have a war chest. That is a dedicated treasury or a reserve in readiness for war. When I say war, I'm not talking about, about fighting the war. Well, it's called a war chest for the, for the reason that it's a war chest. Politicians will tell you that towards 2023, I'm making savings. I'm getting ready to prosecute my ambition, my presidential ambition in 2023. So this is what they do. They put the monies they're making aside because they know that they have one business, the business of politics, and that business must have enough funding. So you keep resources in reserve, okay, that you can plow from when you need to fight economic wars. Anybody here with me? Am I too fast for you, please? And that's what the scripture spoke about when it talks about the palace of the forest of Lebanon. This is what happened in that palace. It's called the Tower of David. When you read the book of 2 um, second, second Samuel chapter 8, verse 7, just make a reference. It's called the Tower of David. Even Solomon spoke about it, I think, in the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 4. Solomon said, talk about it. What did he do is that when kings, and this is from, aside from David, when David finished Goliath and killed all the kings, and he took all their resources and all their armories, he went and put them in a place and keeps them there. Just in case a day comes when we need more arsenals and resources to take from to fight our enemies. David started it. Solomon went and did the same. When you have resource, okay, you have to keep a war chest. Let me run. Let me run. Number six, divest your interests. Now, what was Solomon's one product? Wisdom. But we saw the same Solomon trading. What was he trading on? It was trading. It was doing maritime business. Ships of Tarshish. What was Tarshish? Tarshish was Spain. And I want you to listen to me very clearly because you need to understand that these are real issues. These are real geographies. 
All right, these are real economics. Okay, and it's in the book. All right, so he divided his business. Verse 22 says, uh, he traded in, the, there were ships who brought stuff. So trading, everyone to make money and grow their wealth must be involved in trading. You must have something you are trading in. Stop, stop abusing traders. In fact, that's why they have more money than you. Is that correct? Is that correct? That's why they have more money than you because you abuse them. See, he doesn't go to school. He doesn't know book. Who book help? Huh? <laughs> Part of the ways you make, you grow wealth in the kingdom is by trading. You have to be a trader. What are you, what can you trade? What can you sell? What can you package? What can people pay for? Box your brilliance and sell it. Trade it. Next verse. Next point. Number seven. Spread out your enterprise into a global business network. Spread out your enterprise into a global. Read my lips. Global. Someone say global. Someone say global. Wisdom demands that you think global. Hey, guys. And it's easy now. You can go global like tomorrow. Package yourself to have global networks. And I'm going to show you what it will bring to you. In the book, in the book of 1 Kings 10 verse 28. 1 Kings 10 28. The scripture says this. Are you still with me? Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt. The royal merchants bought some from Q. Solomon made his alliance with these guys. He brought stuff in. Amen. So to spread your business, you see Solomon, he imported silver from Spain, which is Europe. Solomon was in Judah, Jerusalem, in the Middle East. He made business with Spain. Brought stuff from Europe. They weren't called Europe then. But he went far to do business. What did he do? He imported hips. You know what apes are? Monkeys. He imported monkeys and ivories from North Africa. Because that's where they come from. So you could see Solomon moving into Europe and bringing silver from Spain. Moving into Africa and bringing baboons and apes. What does he do? He went into India. He imported peacocks from Asia. So you see, this man doing business in three continents. Asia, Africa, and Europe. Globalization is not a word for today. It has been since the days of wisdom. Don't stay local. Never stay local. Never let Nigeria look at you. If they ban Bitcoin, start something else. Who cares what they bind? What they, what they ban? There is enough wisdom inside me to generate networks. Are you here with me, people? Are you here with me? Number eight, what did Solomon do? What did, how did Solomon become great? How did he bring his wealth into the next level? He had royalties from intellectual property. Those wisdom, that one-man product, that wisdom. Do you know what Solomon did with it? Solomon packaged that wisdom in such a way that everybody came to check him out. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says the kings of the world came to check Solomon out and to listen to his wisdom. And when they listened to his intellectual property, IP, they paid him for it. That some of you, you are sitting on books. You are sitting on books. You are sitting on creative stuff. You are sitting. God has locked inside your spirit some amazing capacity to write or to speak. You ought to be doing it. <laughs> you ought to be doing it. Thank you. Now, this guy is... Okay, thank you, guys. Okay. They said my time is up, so I need to go. I have two more, but I can't give you because my time is up. Oh, you want to give me two minutes? Do you want to give me two minutes? All right, thank you so much. They said they give you two minutes. Thank you for two minutes. I'm going to use it well. So Solomon used this intellectual property. From that, they paid him tributaries. 
just to hear his wisdom. IP, what do you have? What are the ideas that that has been buzzing in your head? Put it down, write it down, push it out. The world have a coaching plan on it. I'm about to start some coaching things. I'm going to do them. I've never done it before. I'm going to do them. I'm not going to charge you. Praise the name of Jesus. There are people out there who are in trouble for me. Hello, people. I'm going to charge them. Every time I teach you all these things for free, you can imagine how much I'm going to, I'm going to get paid if I put this in a package and I call it Masterclass with BT. All right, number nine. I'm just trying to say to you that you have to leverage your IP, your intellectual property. You got it. You just don't know it. Number nine, you have, a, you have to have an export business. You have to export your idea. First Kings 10 verse 29, the C part. First Kings 10 29, the C part. It says, and I, want to, I, like, to, I like to reference that because that's the way, just the way. It says they imported a chariot from Egypt for 600, whatever it is, and they exported it. So these guys were buying powerful breeds of horses from Egypt, they know the price. They are selling for 10 times more. Guys who don't know the difference who are paying for it. That's what you do. Okay? If you can't even export, go to Ujoye. Go and buy things that people have exported and sell it to your friends for high price. Can I hear yes? Number 10. For every area where you have no knowledge, recruit experts. Every proposed venture that you have, this idea hits me. I don't know what to do about it. I think that I should be investing in that. Call an expert. Tell, me, tell them, I'm going to pay you. Give me a feasibility study. Don't go into it yourself. You will lose all your money. Big stake. I have seen an area where they are making money. Let me go and put all my money there. Pastor, borrow me some money. No, I will not borrow you. Get expert. Expert advice. First Kings 10, 28 and 29. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you the same prayer that Solomon prayed because the starting point was wisdom. I want to ask that the Lord will give you the wisdom that you need to know what to do. God will give you the wisdom you need to know what to do. But please remember that you are sitting on gold as you are right now. What did I say? You are sitting on gold. You have a product. You have a wisdom. You have a brilliance. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Say, Father, say after me, dear Father, you have made me a resource and a leader. Today, I confess my lack of capacity to carry out these responsibilities in my limited human ex experience. I stand here today and I ask for your help, that you will help me to package myself and sell my products and put myself before the world so that I can attract resources, I can make money, so I can grow wealth. I ask you, my Father, grant unto me a designing heart to lead myself in this new venture of my life. I want to thank you for grace. So I ask you today, Father, in these business decisions I'm about to start making, give me wisdom. In this career, give me wisdom. Come on, ask for wisdom. Help me to make right investments, right judgments, let me not fritter away the good will you're giving to me. Give me wisdom. I thank you. Pray in the Holy Ghost with me today. Pray in the Holy Ghost with me today. Pray that. Seal it in the Spirit in the name of the Lord. And from now onwards, I know I'm going to be seeing manifestation of gifting, businesses starting in the name of the Lord. One of the business names I saw there, I mean, I'll just share with you, or maybe I should, I should give for free. The Bible said that Solomon had, he had 12 lions. I love the feel of it. If I'm going to start a business, I'll call it 12 Lions Interventions. Hallelujah. That was, a, that was a powerful, that was a very powerful thing because that's a code. But another time God allows me, I'll give you the code. Amen. Do you love me, guys? I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you.